guys. Welcome to another episode of God Speaks. Today we have our friend joining us here, Andy. Front um, and center. Yep. Front and center. I'm the most important, so front and center. <laughs> you are the most important. <laughs> um, we're going to start off with uh, trying our soda for the week. Um, this, I'll just show you here. It's uh, dirt soda. It looks like dirt. It gives absolutely no indication of what it's supposed to taste like as far as, um, you know, a lot of, of these crazy sodas will give a, a funny name, but they'll actually have a flavor to it. Um, this one doesn't give any indication other than it's dirt. So um, uh, this, is, this is by Rocket Fizz, which is a pretty well-known, if you're into... Um, crazy flavored sodas uh, they produce a lot of these if you're into wrestling um, like my friend Andy is here they produce the Roddy Piper soda the um, the bubble gum all out of bubble gum yeah soda which is very good it tastes just like a bazooka bubble gum um, so rocket fizz is um, where you'd want to go rocketfizz.com if you want to get your own or if you're in the Gettysburg area um, go to the sweet candy store in Gettysburg. They have have this for sale there. I'm a little afraid. I'm not gonna lie. It actually smells it's like, like dirt. Wet dirt. <laughs> <laughs> this might be the first one we don't actually finish. You have the smell test. Oh my god. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. On three. One, two, three. Ugh. Okay. It's disgusting, but it doesn't taste as bad as it smells, honestly. I, I can... The smell is, like, on my tongue now. It actually, it's like... kind of sweet. Yeah, it's, it tastes fruity, fruity to me. Uh, like fruity Play-Doh. Yeah. Play-Doh is a good... <laughs> But it smells disgusting. Like, uh, like real disgusting. I don't think it tastes that bad, <laughs> to be honest. I don't think I would drink another one. Yeah. It kind of tastes like, like sugar cane, cream soda, and actual dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It it has a, it has a certain. It leaves that aftertaste. Flavor like that the, I can't the just smell of it. It's like a berry flavor almost. No, it's not. No, <laughs> it is not. <laughs> I like it. <clears throat> I recommend it. Check it out. Dirt soda. <laughs> I'm gonna pour this back into there. Um, shoveled and bottled in the USA. Um, <laughs> Rocketfizz.com. Check it out. Dirt soda. <clears throat> All right. Now into the reason why we're here. Going to pull up BibleDice.com. Our scripture is Proverbs chapter 3. Well, this I opened is... up right to Proverbs. How amazing. Look at that. Like, what are the odds of that? Chapter 3. Um, it's kind of strange. Um, verses 3 and 7. Odd. That's a weird way to roll. Yeah. Um, I mean let's let's read it as it gives it to us and see what it what it looks like, but then maybe we should um read three through seven. So Proverbs Proverbs chapter three verse three. says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And then verse 7 says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. <clears throat> Why do you want to do this? Because both of those passages are connected to the ones right. Like 3 is actually connected to 4. And seven's actually connected to eight. Okay. Why don't we read three through eight? Okay. It says, 
says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and good a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Why don't we pray quick, and then we can let God speak. Lord, I uh, pray that you would um, be with us while we um, read your word here, and I pray that you would speak to us um, and <clears throat> give us the words and the thoughts that you want us to take from the, this passage. Um, and I pray that you would speak through us and that um, those who are watching and listening, um, that you would speak to them also, and that you would give them a revelation on this verse. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. What is your, what um, translation are you reading out of? Um, this is just the NIV. And what does it say, let not? Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. And then 7 says, do not be wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord and shun evil. <clears throat> I'm just asking because I mine's the New King James Version. It says, let not mercy and truth forsake you. So I just I've got at a NLT. Mine has uh, loyalty and kindness, which I was thinking when you were <clears throat> talking about love, uh, made me think of 1 Corinthians 13. It describes love as kindness and patience. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that was an interesting <clears throat> connection, but to kind of go into that first, but so I mean, so whatever the words are, love, faithfulness, kindness, truth, these words, <clears throat> it says bind them around your neck. The first kind of thing I'm thinking about is um, when the Israelites were first getting the Ten Commandments, they wore, they wore these blue tassels that were supposed to um, remind them of the law. Uh, because the stone that, that God wrote the Ten Commandments on, he got from underneath of his throne, and it was a sapphire, which is blue. Um, so that's the first thing I'm, I'm thinking about. It's just, um, I don't know if that means we, we actually have to wear a necklace that says love and kindness or something, you know, but, but it gives you that vision of, you know, be mindful of them at all times, these things, and keep them part of you, keep them close to you. I think of, uh, and I can't remember the passage off the top of my head, I'm horrible with um, Bible addresses, but um, I'm thinking of the verse in the New Testament, um, the faith, hope, and love mm -hmm. verse, the greatest of these is love. Let love and faithfulness never leave you, that's like two of the three that... Um, I believe that was Jesus that was was giving those um, commandments. <clears throat> um. I was kind of thinking too with the <clears throat> the thought of loyalty and kindness. Those are um, by I think even outside of Christianity, the world standards. Those are two qualities that people admire. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as as Christians, we're supposed to be people that set the example. Um, and so if we're setting that example by showing loyalty to the people around us, showing kindness to the people around us, whether they're Christian or not Christian, um, I think that those are the kind of actions we have or attributes, I guess we could show, I'm trying to find the right word for that, but um, that I think kind of would make a big impact on, on who they are and would show the difference. Um, Jesus says that we, we would be known by our love. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's kind of what that... Uh, it's kind of pointing to as well. Yeah, I'm trying to like, <clears throat> I know we have this whole passage that we read, you know, three through eight, but the verses that it gave us to read were three and seven, and I'm trying to connect the two. And I think, I think you just did it there, Andy, at least in my mind, is, you know, when we're, uh, verse seven says, do not be wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord and shun evil. Like when we're working on our own, if we if we take the wisdom of God out of us and we're working on our own will or our own understanding, um, 
and not having love and faithfulness bound around our neck, the result is not going to be godly response. Um, <clears throat> and I think that having love and faithfulness never leave us, having them bound around our neck will be that reminder that we need to not use our own humanly wisdom and to fear the Lord and to shun evil. Um, you can't, it's almost like um, you can't, you can't let love and faithfulness never leave you without, or you can't, you can't be wise in the ways of God and you can't fear the Lord and you can't shun evil unless you have love and faithfulness mm -hmm. bound around your neck. Yeah. And I think you, it's, you said kind of going to God for his wisdom. Uh, I was looking in my translation. It says, don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Um, and I think that's something that we do as people sometimes as we have an idea or have a thought or something and we think we kind of get, oh, I'm... I don't know what you mean by... I haven't. Oh man, Siri. <laughs> Siri's got to have something to say. He must have said hey or something. I know. Um, <laughs> we have a fourth person in the conversation. Siri decided to join the conversation. God is speaking to Siri. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I just thought that was kind of interesting that it says don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of pushing towards uh, rely on God and, and ask God for His wisdom. Mm -hmm. Breaking the rules here a little bit, but kind of just connecting all that. The, the very first verse says, at least in my translation, it says, My son, do not forget my law, but keep, but let your heart keep my commands. Mm -hmm. And then it's going into, let let not, you know, love, mercy, faithful, whatever words we have here, <clears throat> forsake you. So, and then you brought up Jesus, you know, that will be known by our love. Mm -hmm. You know, the first commandment is love God. Second commandment, just like it, is to love your neighbor as yourself. So, the, the law of God... <clears throat> can be summed up in these words. And then this is saying, you know, if if you're leaning in God, if you're leaning on his understanding, if you're leaning on his wisdom, if you're following his commands, the fruit is going to be love. You're going to love people. You're going to be kind to people. You're going to be faithful. You're going to have truth about you. But if you lean on your own understanding, well, that's going to be evil. <laughs> and well, the opposite of health to your flesh would be the decay of your flesh, right? David mm -hmm. in the Psalms talks about his bones being mm -hmm. crushed uh, by the weight of sin. Yeah, that's like super profound there because they're like it. It's a uh, sandwiched there, like verse two, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. And then verse eight, this will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. So if you're lacking love, you're lacking faithfulness. You're a trusting in your your own wisdom that's going to bring the opposite it's going to bring short life and mm. and uh chaos and um i guess the opposite of prosperity would be poor um not not being healthy in your body and having weak bones mm -hmm. i mean that's that's profound there like this passage is giving us almost like the secret to healthy life mm -hmm. love and faithfulness and godly wisdom <clears throat> almost as if to say um present yourself as a living sacrifice like lay down your life yeah for the sake of Jesus. Yeah. I was thinking too with as you were talking about with godly wisdom. So often we try to get we try to think our way is the best um no matter what situation it's at whether it's work or personal life or you know whatever relationships that we have. Um a lot of the times we do what we want to do and what we think is best but we don't actually bother to ask God to help us make the right choices and ask him for his wisdom to guide us through that. So a lot of times when we rely on our own wisdom and are impressed with our own wisdom, we uh, it doesn't work out as well as we'd hoped. Yeah, we have to remember that we were born with sinful <clears throat> nature. So, like, our human nature is to do the complete opposite of 
everything that the book says. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's probably why they're, at least in my translation, it says to bind them around your neck. Because when you put something around your neck, it's always there as a reminder. You're aware of it. That's like, there. You're not going to naturally do this, so you need to remember it. <laughs> you need to literally tie something around your neck. Mm. You need to get a WWJD bracelet. You know, you need to get a tattoo on your arm to remind you, you know. Corinthians 13, this is how you're supposed to love. Like, I can look down at that and when I'm not being a good husband. Yeah. I can remember. Yeah, I, this is actually how I'm supposed to live. <laughs> yeah. So I think it <clears throat> that you bind them around your neck portion of this scripture is just as important as the rest of like we need to like daily remember how we're supposed to be walking through life as Christians. Absolutely. Anything else? Nothing else that's jumping out. That's pretty pretty good. Yeah. We beat the system on that, that website kinda <laughs> tricked us that time. I think it was my first podcast, so right. have to throw throw me for a loop. Well everybody, thanks for joining God Speaks and we hope that um that you got something out of this conversation, that God uses it and like we um like we say every week go on to our social media we have some instagram we have uh facebook let us know what your thoughts are if you studied along with us did god tell you something that we didn't hit um are we saying something that you disagree with and maybe you think you know maybe it really wasn't god speaking maybe it was us using our own minds <laughs> and our own wisdom um we, we just want to hear your thoughts it's going to help us grow we hope to help you grow we'll catch you next time